Good day everyone! My name is Loretto Atomosa, your instructor for microeconomics. And for today's video, we will discuss Module 3, Consumer and Production Theory. And so, this module will introduce you to the theories and ideas behind the consumer and production theory. So as consumers have different needs, wants, demands, likes and dislikes, standards, reactions, lifestyles, traditions, and etc., it is tough to identify and measure our behavior. Also, there is that tendency for us to be curious regarding where, who, or how these products or services we desire were produced. With this video discussion, we will try to explain how consumers behave and explore the fundamentals of production theory. And at the end of this module, you should be able to understand how consumers behave to maximize their satisfaction with a limited budget and understand how market forces determine the supply of the goods and services. Alrighty, let's go! So let's dig deeper on the fifth lesson in our course for microeconomics under module 3, which is consumer behavior. And welcome to the first lesson of this module in microeconomics. In this video discussion, we will study all about consumer behavior. And so, our intended learning outcome for this video discussion are the following. To discuss consumer goods and services. To describe consumer tastes and preferences and understand the concept of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And so, let's dig in. So, how many times do you make decisions throughout the day? Like, what should I wear today? What perfume should I put on? And what am I going to have for lunch? Now, if you think about it, we make many buying decisions every day without giving them much thought. And so, these decisions, as insignificant as they might seem, keep marketers up all night. Because decoding the processes behind consumers' decisions means that we can use that information to boost revenue. So, what is the meaning of consumer behavior? Consumer behavior is the study of consumers and the processes they use to choose, to use, or to consume and dispose of products and services including consumers' emotional, mental, and behavioral responses. And so, consumer behavior incorporates ideas from several sciences including psychology, biology, chemistry, and economics. Now, why is consumer behavior important? Studying consumer behavior is important because it helps marketers understand what influences customers' buying decision. So by understanding how consumers decide on a product, they can fill in the gap in the market and identify the products that are in needed and the products that are obsolete. So studying consumer behavior also helps marketers decide how to present their products in a way that generates a maximum impact on the consumers. So understanding consumer buying behavior is the key secret to reaching and engaging your clients and converting them to purchase from you. Now, as you can observe, we have been talking about consumers. Now, what is consumer? So a consumer is one who demands and consumes goods and services. And so without consumptions, mainly by households, there is no need for production made by firms. So the consumer is the king in a capitalist or free market economy. So for their interest, producers have to satisfy the needs and wants of consumers to earn profits. Therefore, as consumers, our power is to determine what are to be produced since we are the ultimate purchasers of goods and services. So this is referred to as a consumer sovereignty. In general, if we as consumers demand more of a good or service, then more of it will be supplied or vice versa. So the producers simply obey the wishes and desires and the needs and wants of consumers. So this therefore implies that producers are passive agents. That is according to Pass and Lewis in 1993 in the price system because they simply respond to what we want. However, our freedom to satisfy our human wants is not entirely unlimited. For the good of society and individual consumers, the government restricts consumer sovereignty. For example, 
The government prohibits using dangerous drugs and substances and regulates the use of products that are health hazards like alcoholic beverages and cigarettes. It also regulates products that are destructive to the environment like the use of leaded gasoline. And so let's proceed with goods and services. We desire to have all the things to satisfy our present and future wants. Thus, our desire is for all those things that satisfy our wants. All these things are either material goods or services. Now, if something is not wanted by anybody, it will not be called a good or a service. Now, goods refers to anything that provides satisfaction to the needs, wants, and desires of the consumer. They can be any tangible economic products like cars, books, clothes, cell phones, iPads, and etc. that contribute directly or indirectly intermediate goods to the satisfaction of human needs and wants. While services, on the other hand, are any intangible economic activities such as hairdressing, catering, insurance, banking, telecommunications, and etc. So which likewise contribute directly or indirectly to human wants satisfaction. So goods are material things wanted by human beings. They can be seen or touched. Services are non-material things. These cannot be seen or touched only their effects are felt. So when we are hungry, we take food. When we fall sick, we take medicines. When we study, we use book, notebook, pen, paper, and etc. So all of these are examples of goods which satisfy some of our wants. All the things which satisfy human wants are good. And so let's move on to classification of tangible goods. First, we have consumer goods. So these are the goods that yield satisfaction directly to any consumer. So these goods are primarily sold for consumption and not to be used for further processing or as an input or raw material needed in producing another good. So usually, these are the goods that are easily accessible to consumers. For example, soft drinks, bread, crackers, cellular phones, loads and clothes, including etc. Second, we have essential or necessity goods. So these are goods that satisfy the basic needs of man. So in other words, these are goods that are necessary for our daily existence as human beings. These are also goods that we cannot live without, such as food, water, shelter, clothing, electricity, medicine, and etc. And third, we have luxury goods. Luxury goods are those which men may do without, but which are used to contribute to their comfort and well-being. Examples of luxury goods are private jets, yacht, luxury cars, perfumes, jewelries, and etc. Fourth, we have an economic good. An economic good is that which is both useful and scarce. So it has a value attached to it and a price has to be paid for its use. Water from our faucet is an economic good because we are not utilizing it free as we have to pay its distributor. And lastly, a free good. A free good is if a good is so abundant that there is enough of it to satisfy everyone's needs without anybody paying for it. The air that we breathe and the sunlight coming from the sun are examples of free good. And now let's proceed to taste and preferences. Consumer tastes and preferences affect the demand of a product or service. For example, consumers have very different taste and preference in clothing. Now, to keep consumers' interest in the product or service and the demand high, it is important for business to do efficient brand advertising. So taste and preferences are determined by age, income, education, gender, occupation, customs, and traditions, as well as culture. Now, let's try to define this one by one. So when we say preference, these are choices made by us, consumers, as to which products or services to consume. 
So the strength of our preferences will determine which products to buy given our limited disposable income and thus the demand of products as well as which product to buy. So we as consumer also express preferences as to which particular brand or a product to purchase. Now, on the other hand, in general economists use the term taste as a cat call category for consumers, attitude towards a product. So in this sense, if consumers taste for a good or service increase, then the quantity demanded increases and vice versa. So preference is what you prefer and taste is what you like or dislike. So consumer's taste refers to a person's ability to choose quality goods or goods suitable to him. Whereas consumer preference refers to choose something better than the previous goods. And lastly, let's proceed to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs identifies the basic priorities of every consumer. So Maslow's saw human needs in the form of hierarchy ascending from the lowest to the highest. So he concluded that when one set of needs is satisfied, this kind of need ceases. So the basic human needs placed by Maslow in ascending order of importance like a pyramid are physiological needs, security or safety needs, social needs, esteem needs, and self-actualization needs. So, let us all witness a video presentation prepared to us by Sprout to better understand Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Let's all watch this. Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a theory in psychology. It argues that there are five stages of human needs that motivate our behavior. Abraham Maslow proposed his theory in 1943 after studying what he called exemplary people, such as Albert Einstein or Eleanor Roosevelt. First, there are physiological needs, such as the need to breathe, eat, drink, or sleep. The moment we get enough of that and we feel awake and our bellies are full, we get motivated by the next thing. Now, we want safety. We try to earn money, build up resources, and look for shelter that protects us against dangers. Once we are satisfied and feel safe, we have time to think about what we want next. At stage three, we seek love and belonging. We desire to be close to family and friends, belong to a society, or join a gang. But the moment we feel completely part of a group, we already wish to be a little different than the rest. At stage four, we look for esteem, self-confidence, and respect from our peers. We want to be someone. If we have money, we buy a fancy watch. If we have a brain, we write or think or work a lot. Motivation to perform and compete is now at its highest. Students, sportsmen and inventors excel. Neil Armstrong even flew to the moon. Only if we breathe and drink and eat and sleep enough and we feel safe and part of a group and still special, only then can we reach level five, self-actualization. Now we can relax. Be creative, accept facts for what they are, give back or do whatever we want. No more pressure, unless of course there is trouble below. If you are a leader and believe in the theory, use it. First, make sure everyone has eaten well. Then make them feel safe and help them belong to a group. Once they feel they belong, they are ready to stand out and excel. Thanks for watching. Even if we try to keep it short, each video is quite some work. First, we research and write a script. Then, we brainstorm ideas. And after that, we draw the storybook. Then, it's recorded, narrated, and finally edited. If you want to support us to make more videos on learning and education, visit patreon.com slash sprouts. Alrighty, amazing presentation, right? Now, Maslow's hierarchy is most often displayed as a pyramid, as you have observed. So the lowest levels of the pyramid are made up of the most basic needs, while the most complex needs are on the top of the pyramid. 
So needs at the bottom of the pyramid are basic physical requirements, including the need for food, water, sleep, and warmth. Now, once these lower level needs have been met, people can move on the next level of needs, which are for safety and security. Now, as people progress up the pyramid, needs become increasingly psychological and social. Soon, the need for love, friendship, and intimacy becomes important. Now, further up the pyramid, the need for personal esteem and feelings of accomplishment take priority. So like Carl Rogers, Maslow's emphasized the importance of self-actualization, which is a process of growing and developing as a person in order to achieve individual potential. And that's it for Lesson 5. See you in the next video. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. Goodbye!